Hey folks, in my Frostclaw build video, I got a lot of comments about unrealistic levels of gear for COF characters. Um, this was the gear that I used in that video. So in this video, I've unequipped all legendaries and also red rings and put in some uh, mediocre gear. And I'll be attempting to run 1100 corruption with this gear just to show the performance of the build. Uh, for the skills, the setup is exactly the same. Nothing has changed. I'll include the build planner in the description, as well as the passive trees. Everything is exactly the same, only the gear is different. So let's jump into it. Now let's quickly talk about offense, defense, and mana management for the build and what to prioritize. So you'll notice that we do get a decent amount of strength, so armor scaling is not bad. I have a decent amount of armor on my gloves, some on the belt, and some on this set ring that is a decent placeholder until you get something better. Uh, and a few other things give us a little bit of armor. We also get some from our blessings. So we scale that pretty well. So here we have 3,500 armor with some basic gear. This is a little bit more armor than my other build because I use the Weaver's Glove, so I lose a lot there. Uh, but this does give us a fair bit of defense. Another thing that's really important is if you look in the Rune Master tree, you'll see that we take reduce bonus damage taken from crits. That means that you'll want to continue scaling this rather than going for crit avoid. So here I have a little bit on my belt and also some on the gloves. In addition to the passive tree that gets me close to cap on the reduce damage taken, which is a pretty good defensive layer. We also have fairly decent resists here. This could be a little bit better, but it's fine. 
Uh, poison res is probably the least important. Void could be a little bit higher, but otherwise this is this is acceptable. Uh, we also get word retention from int, so you'll want to get the int as high as possible anyway, and that'll keep you keep you alive pretty well. We also have the twisted heart, which converts the health into ward. So for every cast, you get a pretty good amount there. So it's very important that you prioritize this node in the Sork tree. This is how you recover your life so that you can continue converting it into ward. In addition to that, we also get a decent amount of defense from Railwind's Frost Guard. That gives us some DR and some other good stuff. We also get some DR from the Flame Rush tree and a little bit from the flame ward tree as well as a bit of ward retention and some other good stuff to help us sustain our ward levels while we're mapping and bossing. As for offense, a pretty large chunk of our damage comes from spark charges. This applies on Ellie Nova as well as the regular hits which we do quite a lot of. If you look in the Nova tree you'll see the spark charge is does a lot of our damage we need to apply as many of these as we can and scale that with the Enigma, which scales with flat int. So int is extremely important. Int also scales our crit chance through the Rune Master tree and a few other things. So definitely focus all of your priority into int, slam ints as you can onto the gear, and that'll help quite a lot. We also get pretty big benefit from Shred because of how many hits we do. So another thing you want to focus on is some shred on your gear. It doesn't take a whole lot of shred to get many hundreds of stacks onto stuff just from a few affixes here and there go quite a long way. As for mana regen, I went over this in my previous video. I shared the spreadsheet to help you with your calculations. The main thing is it's important that you're net mana loss per second from Frostclaw is less than your mana regen. So since my cast speed is lower on this variant without any cast speed slams on my gear, I actually need a lot less mana regen. You can see I have a mana regen belt here, but I actually don't even need that. I'm probably at about a net 4 loss mana per second from Frostclaw, generating 11. So you can see even spamming my abilities absolutely no mana problems and that is with all of the extra casts in the tree. It's important that you have this node here for minus three, this node here for the minus six as well as mana recovered on cast which applies to every additional cast here. So each frost claw gives you five cast. This is very important for your mana sustain. You also need these for the additional hits. If you don't have that, your build will not perform as well, so keep that in mind. I will link the spreadsheet in the description, and if you want to understand how it works, uh, go look at my previous Frostclaw video that goes into more detail. Uh, other than that, that's all you really need to get started. These idols are pretty important as well for mana sustain. If you don't have them, you'll need to drop something else in order to get an extra point of celerity in the tree here. So. Uh, you might be able to drop this, you're going to lose quite a lot of damage, but just to be able to mana sustain, you can do that. Another option, you might be able to make it up with mana regen itself if you get a high roll on your other pieces of gear, but it'll be really hard to deal with that through mana regen. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed. Um, if you made it this far, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll be doing more videos like this. And cheers.